Okay. And are they close enough together? They're good. Okay. And first of all, let me get uh, who you are and what you do. I'm Matt McCormick, and I'm the Department of Energy Manager for the Richland Operations Office at the Hanford site. And you are, sir? Uh, Kevin Smith, and I'm the manager of the Office of River Protection, which is kind of the central part, center part of the uh, Hanford site that uh, has the waste treatment, pl uh, waste tanks, and the waste treatment plant project. Okay. Well, let's first talk about uh, radioactive material. How much radioactive material is in the soil, and how much of that actually gets to the groundwater? So I'll take that question. So we do have some uh, environmental contamination uh, caused by radioactivity as a result of the operation of the nuclear reactors along the river and the processing of nuclear fuel to extract plutonium when the site operated as a defense mission from 1943 to the late 80s. Uh, what we're doing is a couple things, is we're removing radioactively contaminated soil uh, from the environment and disposing of it on the central plateau and getting um, that uh, radioactive material away from the Columbia River and safely disposed of. So it's a removal operation to remove radioactively contaminated soil and move it away from the river. And we've made a lot of progress, so I'm going to talk about the progress we made in that um, cleanup area tonight. Uh, the other thing, some of the radioactively contaminated water has reached the groundwater in uh, the center portion of the site, and we have active pump and treat systems that are extracting contaminated groundwater and cleaning it up uh, before it impacts the Columbia River. And Is there any indication that that contaminated material will make it all the way to the river? Some has made it to the river. Uh, um, uranium, a small uranium plume in the southern portion of the site, uh, a radioactive a hydrogen isotope called tritium has made it to the river, very low levels of radioactivity and once it hits the river it uh, basically disappears and is not a, a threat to human health or, or the environment downstream. However, we still want to uh, prevent uh, future uh, contamination reaching the river and then clean up this contamination as soon as we can. That leads me to the question about the uh, leaking tanks. A number of the single shell tanks are uh, leaking and we found out that in October 2012 that there was a double shell tank that was leaking from the inner shell uh, into the annulus. Uh, that's the AY-102 tank. Uh, what's being done to deal with leakage from the tanks, especially the double shell tanks? I'll take that one. Uh, so you've talked about uh, the, the leaking single-shell tanks uh, and double-shell tanks. Over the years, a number of the tanks have leaked. Uh, all of the tanks were put through an interim stabilization process that completed in 2005 that took all of the pumpable liquid out of those single-shell tanks and put them into the double-shell tanks. We have had a number of single-shell tanks that showed some measure of uh, liquid level declining. But those are, have been evaluated, and the majority of those had been attributed to uh, various causes, such as evaporation. They're, these tanks are at temperature, and so, so they evaporate more rapidly. We did have one tank, a T-111, that was leaking, and as, as of recently, it has stabilized back and is relatively flat as we're, we're at, at a flat level of liquid at this point in time. Do we need to build more tanks? We'll have to evaluate that. Right now, we have enough tankage to be able to get to our WTP mission. Uh, as for the double shell tank, uh, we have uh, um, small amounts of liquid coming from the inner annulus in, uh, that is being contained in the secondary annulus of about a soda can a week. And it sits there on the floor and then dries sort of in place. And so far it's con fully contained within the AY-102 secondary annulus. And it's about seven miles from the, from the river, just so, to let you know, to give you geographical distance. So right now that double shell tank uh, is not insulting the environment. It's, it's contained within the secondary tank. Are you concerned about some of the other double shell tanks based upon what happened to AY-102? We manage the double shell tanks very carefully. Uh, there's a double shell tank integrity program. We have completed an extended condition review on all of these tanks to see if they had similar characteristics as AY-102. You may not know that AY-102 was the first double shell tank constructed and as they build additional double shell tanks they added different features, they added improvements and uh, we have not found uh, any of the other double shell tanks to have a, uh, a similar leak condition at this point in time. But we run a very active double shell tank integrity program which is a very comprehensive analysis to ensure that they are safe. Are there plans to build more? 
Uh, right now we have a plans to build a tank waste and characterization facility which is to feed the WTP plant, but we are evaluating the need uh, to build additional tank st space at this time. We have not made a decision. With the WTP, with the waste treatment plant, the VIT plant as they call it, uh, you stop construction on a part of the pretreatment function for that plant. What's the status of that now, and what can you do to deal with the issues that arose? That's mine too. Yeah. Uh, the waste treatment plant has technical issues. Remember, it's a design build, and it's a one of a kind facility that is extremely large, and there's no companions like it. So as we're building this plant, they that we've determined that there are some technical issues that require us to stop, do some additional testing, and perhaps redesign a small portion of that to be able to work. We are in the process of doing that, and we're going to complete our full-scale vessel testing starting in July and then over the next two years to complete that testing, we think. Uh, that'll give us the ability to maybe standardize vessels, make it much more efficient, and, and put pretreatment back on its construction um, uh, rate to be complete. So to, to answer your question, the, we do have other facilities that are uh, approaching completion, such as the uh, balance of facilities and support facilities, and also the low activity waste facility. And the department has recently given a uh, proposal to the state of Washington to be able to operate that low activity waste facility early and start making glass on the low activity side as um, soon as possible. As I understand, uh, it was supposed to be in full operation by 2022. Will that happen? Uh, that's the schedule we're on. The department wants to uh, be very careful how it promises commitments so that we can keep them. Uh, right now we're on schedule for that uh, time frame. And the other schedule was complete cleanup by 2047. Will that happen? Uh, we'll have to take a look at what, when we solve the issues with pretreatment to have fidelity on the end date. Uh, but uh, right now we need to have, know what those issues are to solve and to solve them before we can give a, a, a realistic completion date. Okay, last question, and this will be for river protection. How can you assure the people of the Northwest that dangerous levels of radioactivity will not get into the Columbia River? Sure, sure. Well, a couple things we're doing. One is we have a large uh, removal operation along the Columbia River that's focused on the contaminated soil and solid radioactive waste that was buried next to the river. And we're nearing completion of removing all that contamination, moving it away from the river on the central plateau. And most of that work will actually finish in 2015 with two uh, barrel grounds that will go beyond 2015 and complete the 2018 time period. We are also uh, treating groundwater that is contaminated with radioactive contaminants along the Columbia River. We have two, uh, one treatment, um, uh, um, I'm going to start over, one treatment process, one treatment process that injects chemical into the soil to hold up a radioactive contaminant called strontium-90 so that it doesn't get into the river. And in fact, it is a technology that um, the cleanup folks of Fukushima came and visited and talked to our uh, scientists and engineers, and they actually deployed the same technology in Fukushima to hold up um, strontium in their soil. So that is working. And then also over the next couple of years, we plan to slow down um, some very low levels of uranium entering the river uh, through a similar process where we bind the uranium in the soil so it doesn't move into the groundwater and therefore into the river. So with those actions, the most important one of removing the radioactive contamination in the soil and the solid waste that could affect uh, the groundwater in the Columbia River in the future is what gives assurance that it, um, contamination won't reach the river in the future. And then also we have a very extensive groundwater monitoring um, well network, thousands of wells along the Columbia River to confirm that the Columbia River is safe and then we also take samples in the uh, Columbia River itself. And then one more uh, defense in depth, if you will, uh, the drinking water that's drawn from the river right uh, south of the, of the Hanford site does measure for radioactivity that could be coming from uh, the Hanford site and it always comes out less than detectable. You might mention the pump and treat facility and the, and the injection wells too a little bit, if you're inclined. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, moving to the central plateau, we also have a large pump and treat facility on the central plateau that is designed to contain plumes on the central plateau so they don't reach the river in the future. 
and the radioactive plumes that we're dealing with is uranium and technetium-99. So that uh, facility is in place and is treating over 1,500 gallons a minute in terms of treating groundwater and containing those plumes to the central plateau so they don't reach the river in the future. Not an easy job, is it? No, it's a challenge all the time, and that's what makes it uh, rewarding and um, very um, um, passionate about what we do. Thank you. There, there is a, um, uh, one exception where we do take off-site waste, and it's from the United States Navy, from Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, and their uh, reactor compartments from submarines and surface craft okay. that, that we do dispose of on-site. What about the Columbia Generating Station? Do you take in, is there any no, waste they from use, that? No, they do have waste, and one, there's not a, a commercial low-level burial ground or disposal site on the Hanford site that takes commercial waste that is operated by a commercial company and uh, regulated by the state of Washington Department of Health and that takes low activity radioactive waste both from um, Columbia Generating Station but also um, um, radioactive waste from uh, places like Oregon uh, and mostly it's um, low-level radioactive waste from ca cancer treatment mm -hmm. and from the hospitals here in the state of Oregon, state of Washington, and Idaho uh, for can cancer treatment facilities and hospitals. So that provides a service for the Northwest. Uh, it's not a Department of Energy operated facility. It's on leased land um, and totally separate from Department of Energy. Okay, very good. Well, thank you very much.